Hansel and Gretel, read by Billy Nordhagen as Gretel, Jeremy Asabra as the narrator and the father, Nelson Vivas as Hansel, and Gabriela Diaz as the stepmother and the witch. Once upon a time, in a village far, far away, Hansel and Gretel lived in a damp little cottage in the dark side of Long Lost Wood. Their mother had died one frosty day, so their father had married a new wife, who was not as sweet as she seemed. In fact, she was as bad as a rotten apple. Their children eat too much. She grumbled one day to her husband as Hansel and Gretel shared a single slice of bread. You must lose them in the wood, so we may have more food at home. If I do that, the wolves will eat them, he protested. What kind of father would do that to his own children? A poor one. The stepmother answered. Take them away tonight. As soon as the first star shone, the children's father led them along tangled pathways to a crooked tree. My dears, he groaned, wait here while I search for firewood. Then, away, he stumbled back to his damp little cottage and his cruel wife. Quite too soon, wolves began to howl, and the children shivered. We have walked too far, sighed Gretel. Our father is lost, and so are we. Cheer up, little sister, said Hansel with a smile. I heard our stepmother's horrid plan, so I marked every twist of the path with a pure white pebble. And there, in the starlight, Gretel saw a line of shining stones. Wow, good idea, Hansel. The children followed the white trail, and by sunrise, they were safely home. My stepmother smiled, however, was as cold as winter rain. Husband! She hissed. See how your two pests torment me. Tonight you must lose them forever. She gave each child a morsel of stale bread, and when their father led them through long lost wood, they sadly followed him. After many miles, he mopped his eyes and said, Wait here, my dears, while I search for ripe blackberries. They knew he would never come back, but when the wolves howled, Hansel smiled and said, Cheer up, little sister. This time I have scattered a trail of small white breadcrumbs. Alas, there was no trail to be seen. Birds had eaten every crumb. So the two children slept on a bed of brown leaves, and in their dreams they saw a white dove who circled above them, calling, Follow me, follow me. When they woke in the misty morning, there was a white dove fluttering away. Let's follow her, said Hansel. Things can't get any worse. Almost at once, the children saw a wonderful cottage made from gingerbread and sweets. Their mouths watered, and as soon they were nibbling delicious chunks of wall and window fruit. Suddenly, a sugar sweet voice said, Come in, my dears, and warm yourselves. An old lady stood by the door, and the children forgot to be frightened. In they skipped, and bang, went the door. They were trapped inside a witch's house. <laughs> now her voice became as hard as seaside rock. Got you! She cackled, locking <laughs> Hansel inside an iron cage. Boy, you will grow plump and juicy. Girl, you will be my slave. <laughs> I will eat Hansel when he is fat enough. The old woman said, but Gretel tricked her. The old woman was almost blind, so Gretel gave Hansel a chicken bone. Every day she checked to see if Hansel was fat yet. Let me touch your finger. The old woman said, but Hansel gave her the chicken bone instead, and she wondered why he never grew fatter. At last, the witch shrieked. Girl! Build up the fire. I want boy pie for my tea. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Gretel said politely. But I've never cooked a boy pie before. Do you think the oven is hot enough? The it's witch hot. stamped her foot and peered into the oven. It's hot, hot, hot! She screamed, and no wonder. Gretel had pushed her inside and slammed the no! door. In moments, Hansel was free. The two children grabbed the witch's treasure and raced outside to find the white dove was waiting for them. Of course, she led them home by the shortest way, and when their father saw them, his smile was as warm as the summer sun. Astonishingly, Hansel and Gretel's horrible stepmother had vanished that very day, while all that remained of the witch was one smoky gingerbread biscuit. The end.